Hi, my name is Robert Burns, and today we're going to talk about the Cisco Nexus 1000V and a new method to configuring your uplinks called Mac pinning. Okay, let's get started here. So currently I am logged into my 1000V VSM, and we can see that I am running version 404 SV1.2. In this version, we released a new method of doing port channels called Mac pinning. The great thing about Mac pinning is it doesn't require any port channels to be configured on the on my upstream switches. All we have to do is configure the interfaces as trunks and allow the appropriate VLANs. If we take a look at some of the other traditional ways we have uh, of creating port channels here, I'll just go into my port profile here from my system uplink. And we'll do our channel group command. And you can see I've got my MAC pinning and subgroup. So subgroup allows me to base my subgrouping based on either manual or CDP. So if you have CDP uh, enabled on your upstream devices, you can actually use CDP to enable uh, to tell the VSM that yes, these two links are from the same switch, therefore put these into a port channel automatically. Okay, the other way to do it, if you don't have CDP enabled devices, you can also assign your manual subgroups. So that all you do for that is you go into each interface and you'll assign the subgroup of 0 through 31. So for every device that you have connected multiple links, that's going to be the same subgroup ID. For our purposes today, we're going to be doing Mac pinning. So Mac pinning, again, just gets, what it does is it assigns each of your virtual interfaces to a subgroup in a round robin fashion. So every subgroup is going to be assigned to every uplink. So if I have four uplinks, I'll have four subgroup IDs. So how we view our subgroup IDs? Well, there's a command called vem command, which will display a lot of very in, uh, in, important information for troubleshooting. And we can view this by either entering the command from the uh, CLI of the host or we can actually execute the command remotely here from the VSM. So to do that all we do is we go module vem3 in my case here execute vem command and if I just press enter I'll see a list of all the show commands I can actually display and this is actually pulling data back from that vem module. So what I want to do here is go vem command show port. Okay so this is all information for module number three. So what I got here is a bunch of information which shows me my four uplinks and I can see my under the middle column here under subgroup ID is I've got subgroup IDs 4, 5, 6, and 7 and those tie in with my VM NIC numbers. So 4 goes to 4, 5 to 5, 6 to 6, 7 to 7. Very nice. And I can see they're all up. Everything's great. The other command we can do is one called them command show pinning. And this is because I am in pinning mode already. I've configured that, that I'm able to see this output. If you were using subgroup ID or subgroup manual, you would not see some of this information, or so much information anyway. So this command here gives me a lot of useful information here, and I'm going to go over all the columns here. So the first one you see is the LTL. The LTL is a unique identifier for every interface or virtual interface that is on a VEM module. Okay, next one over we have a interface index, everyone unique. And next one is a port channel LTL. Now this port channel LTL refers to a same, the same one all the way down. Everything is 304. And that's because even though all these uplinks are in separate subgroups, they're acting as a single uplink. So all of these are in bundle ID of 304. Now this is because I've got my, my system uplink is carrying all my data and my control traffic. Some people may opt to put two interfaces in for my control traffic and two interfaces for my data uplink. Okay, in that case, you would see two separate bundle IDs. Next column over, I've got a VEM, uh, sorry, VSM subgroup ID. What this corresponds to is if I was doing any kind of static pinning in my port profiles, I would see it displayed here. So static pinning would be good if I wanted to maybe pin my control traffic or my vMotion traffic to a particular uplink. So within my virtual um, port profile, I would go in and go subgroup ID and then three, sorry, four through seven, whatever ones are valid. Because we're displaying 32, that's outside of the range of 0 to 31, so I know that's just the default, and that's going to allow it to go, go in a round-robin fashion. There will be no static pinning configured on my interfaces here, you can see. Next column over, we have the VEM subgroup ID. Now this column here can be a little confusing, but I'll give you a quick explanation and tell you why it's useful. So the VEM subgroup ID is, is assigned in a sequential order here. So we can see it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, all the way up through 9. And again, that's going to go all the way up to 31. Now, where that's relevant is it's going to show me some information on failover and fail back. The last column is the most important one. This is the actual column, the effective subgroup ID, 
that tells me where my interfaces are actually going to go over, which uplink subgroup they belong to. So if I take a look at, say, I want to look up one of my VMs here, DC01. So I see his LTL is 48. Okay, in my show pinning command here, LTL48 is showing me his effective subgroup ID is 4. Now I can also see that information here under the pin subgroup ID of the show port command. So I've got all my, you can see, very evenly distributed here. I've got 3 in subgroup 4, I've got 3 in 5, 2 in 6, and 2 in 7. So if I did create another virtual interface, it would then get put to probably 6 or 7, because they are the next in line. So what we're going to do as a test here is I'm going to turn down one of these interfaces here. So we're going to turn down interface number 6 here. So LTL50, we'll keep an eye on that one. So I know that my effective subgroup ID of 6 corresponds to VM NIC 6. So I'm going to go shut that down on this upstream switch and we're going to see how the pinning gets repinned. So I'm already on here and I'm just going to go shut the interface. Go back to my VSM. Now if I just want to confirm that that interface is shut, I can do a VM command show port and I can see here that my VM NIC 6 is indeed down. Very good. Now let's take a look at our pinning. Okay, we can see all my pinning now from the top to bottom here has changed. So I've got no sixes now, they've been changed. So the two fields that changed here were LTL50, which is now going to seven, and LTL55 at the bottom here. That one's now pinned to subgroup ID four. Now the curious thing I mentioned here with the VEM subgroup ID, this is gonna dictate which interfaces do fail back. Now what's gonna happen is when I re-enable interface VMNIC6, any effective subgroup ID that matches a VEM subgroup ID will fail back. Now unfortunately I'm only going to have one that's going to match that which is going to be this guy right here LTL50. So when subgroup ID 06 comes back online it'll then look to my VEM subgroup ID and say okay I've got a match of 06 here he's going to get repinned back to that interface. All the rest of these including LTL55 is going to stay in his new home. He'll stay on subgroup ID of 4. So let's go back and try that now shut. We'll go back here, give it a couple seconds, do a short port. He's still down and he's back up now. So I can see he's back up now and his subgroup ID is back to showing 6. And if we look at our pinning here, now this may not take effect until there's traffic being sent. But in a couple seconds if I refresh this command here, I will see that this does change to 6. So let's try and see what comes back here. It may take a couple seconds. So we definitely will not see this last one here. He will stay put as we suspected here, but the other one will come back here in a second. Refresh again, and there we go. We can see that he's now back to subgroup of six. And as I said, the other one down here will stay off it. So now this can present a problem here. We can see that only one interface has gone back to that interface. So sorry, one subgroup has gone back online. So only one interface is making use of that. So we can actually take a lot of the traffic and we got some wasted bandwidth happening there where a lot of those other virtual interfaces are now stockpiled on the other active uh, subgroup IDs. So this behavior actually will be changing in the next release. We're actually going to change it to go in a round robin fashion. Um, anytime an uplink comes back online, we're then going to repin all the virtual interfaces. And that will keep us a nice evenly distributed load across all of our uplinks. So that's it for VEM command here. Hopefully we understand how the VEM command works, um, how the MAC pinning operates, and how to expect and anticipate what's going to happen if you lose a subgroup or if you lose a uplink, and then what's going to happen as far as it, when it comes back online, how it's going to behave in this version. Okay, thank you very much for joining me.